it started in the suburbs. We couldn't quite say who it was, that would be too easy. It wouldn't be fair. There's the inner city kids who got richer and moved out to start families amongst the green. They thought they were doing good, and they were, but only for themselves. Poverty becomes a memory when you've got a garden instead of a rickety old balcony littered with dank, disposable barbecues and half-broken bikes. And when truths become memories, they become concepts. And concepts are easier to deny. You can fashion your own narrative now, one where your struggle makes you the hero and your success makes you king or queen or somewhere in between. And everyone you left behind just didn't quite have what it takes to make it out of the grey. But these are the victims who found their way out. Perhaps then they should get a pass. Rather them than the high tax thieves who always knew they'd settle on the outskirts of where all the action is. Standing on the edge of a fishbowl, ready to reach out a grubby paw and take a swipe as and when they please. They head in Monday to Friday and watch the football with the boys on the weekends. Sometimes with the inner city boys who made it outside. They're almost the same, all equal on the surface. But the struggle wasn't quite as real to them. These are the men and women who stick to what they know. They're the ones the others try to emulate and they know it. And so the great evolution begins. The slow sink into conservative whiteness. The blue washed out until it's just beige. The most boring of convictions, the kind only the lazy could ever define. You go about your day, nice enough, um, being polite to strangers and buying the tramp in the street a sandwich a week and always giving up your seat to the woman with the a baby on board badge precariously pinned above her bump. You pretend to care about politics, but politics means self-interest and because the free market helped you, you pretend it can help everyone. You forget the role that chance plays in every aspect of your life. And that suits you, because the truth is far too scary to let in. And so every five years, and sometimes in between, you trot yourself down to the polling booth and you put an X in a box and you pat yourself on the back for changing the world. But you'd never take responsibility for the darkness. You'll bask in the yellow of sun, but never in the deep blue black of the cold. You couldn't possibly hold yourself accountable when Danny down the street went to hospital for hypothermia because she couldn't afford to pay her gas bill because the council decided she just wasn't the right kind of ill. You'll happily buy a big issue from Bill because group accountability means a couple of bucks here and there instead of a system that keeps poor people off the streets. You'd never choose to close your local library it's just what needed to be done. Besides, nobody reads books anymore. And anyway, you can just buy them online. Everyone has the internet, right? The deficit is your master. Not that you know what it means. It's just some man in a suit said it was important and said that the slightly scruffier man was an idiot because he had a different kind of beard. Doesn't he know appearances matter? You make up your mind on someone within 10 seconds of meeting them. And you knew he was trouble anyway when you saw him posing with some hippie from Kent. When the papers called him a communist, you knew that was the last straw. Because the government is there to serve you. And I mean you as you, not the general, you. Because you are a good person. And you play by the rules and you pay your taxes, mostly, and you give to charity and you work hard for that paycheck and you deserve that Mercedes you bought because you are a good person. And it's not your fault the world isn't fair. 
because it isn't fair for everyone, but it should be fair for you because you'd never hurt a fly. And you just want to eat your bloody blue beef burgers and drink your full fat milk and know that you are the good guy. You are not the problem in this world. It's us and them and you and them and you and we and us and Britain first. First and on top and on our own. You are the hero of your story. And so you sidle out into the street and you walk into that polling place and you wait in line like a good little lemming. And you put that cross in that box and you smile and you wait and you really made a difference. You followed your heart. You changed the world, you good democratic little boy. And you always knew that when it came down to it, you'd be another good little lemming following the rest off the cliff. And you were the last one left, but you still went. And, and it wasn't your fault. When it all went down and they started shooting, the rioting, the looting, the death, the shooting, it wasn't your fault. You were just doing what you were told. You aren't to blame for the shooting, the rioting, the looting. You couldn't have known. They didn't tell you this could happen. They said it was about freedom and trade and the world. You hold no responsibility for the death, the shooting, the rioting, the looting. You're not the one in charge here. You hold no power. You're just a, a little grey suit in the big vast greenness of the suburbs.